What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I am back with another Soprano log. Today, we're looking at the sixth episode of the fourth season, Everybody Hurts. Fans of R.E.M. will, of course, know that title. And this episode was written by Michael Imperioli and directed by Steve Buscemi. So pretty interesting combination there. The episode opens with Christopher getting high on heroin as he's been doing this whole season. Tony calls him up and tells him to meet him in 20 minutes. And of course, you know, Christopher being high, this is really difficult for him. Uh, but he manages to show up, although Tony does notice that something's wrong with him. He's visibly stoned. But he says to Tony that he was just drinking some wine. And Tony ends up believing him. But Tony tells him that uh, more and more over the coming years, he's going to be giving his orders only through Christopher. This is a way to insulate himself from, you know, illegal activities. Um, and it's a bump up for Christopher because he'll be, you know, kind of the second in command of the family under Tony. You know, so Chris is very honored by this. Although when Tony says that he's going to lead the family into the 21st century, you know, Christopher says they're already in a 21st century. You know, classic, he's stoned and, you know, his mind's not working properly. But Tony ends up not, you know, really noticing the, the drug addiction just yet. Uh, meanwhile, AJ has, is hanging out with his friends and his new girlfriend, uh, Devin Pillsbury. His friends keep asking him questions about his father and the mafia. You know, as Tony would say, they've been watching too many movies. And they're really fascinated about it. And they keep asking if, if he's ever seen like a shooting or, you know, has anyone ever attacked the house or something like that. And I've noticed that in the list of characters that, you know, people find really annoying, I really wonder why they never bring up this friend, Matt. You know, this guy is a dweeb um, and he's pretty annoying, too. So I've, it's pretty funny that he's never brought up amongst the list of most annoying characters on the show. But meanwhile, in bed, Carmela tells Tony that she wants to set Furio up with her friend um, and have them go on a date together. And she also casually mentions that she learned that Gloria Trillo committed suicide. Now, Carmela doesn't know that she and Tony were having an affair, but this visibly shakes Tony when he learns that, you know, Gloria is dead uh, by suicide. He lashes out at Melfi later for, you know, not helping her and for hiding the fact that she's been dead this whole time from him. But really, he blames himself, you know, for not being there for her. And he thinks the suicide is his fault. Um, he has a dream later um, about his guilt and her death. Uh, meanwhile, Artie is asked by his hostess's brother to loan him $50,000. Um, they're planning on, you know, selling this new alcohol in America, Armagnac. Um, they think it's going to be the next big thing. Artie, of course, doesn't have that kind of money, but he wants to make a little bit of profit. So he goes to Ralph to try to get the loan so that he can in turn give it to this guy. But Ralph declines the loan um, because he knows that, you know, if Artie doesn't pay him back, he's not going to be able to do anything to him because he's Tony's friend. Uh, meanwhile, Tony sets out to prove that he's not a toxic person. You know, he does nice things for people. He takes Janice out to dinner and, you know, tells her that he's supportive of her relationship with Bobby. Later, he signs the living trust for Carmela, not the irrevocable trust that she wanted originally, um, but the living trust. So that way that if they get divorced, he still doesn't have to pay. Um, so it's not the nicest thing in the world to do, but um, it still makes her happy. He ends up getting cousin Brian some new suits. And lastly, the most important thing he does is is he agrees to loan Artie the 50k um, at a very low interest rate. Again, he's doing all this to kind of prove to himself that he's a good person so that he doesn't have to feel guilty about, you know, Gloria's death. Meanwhile, AJ and his friend Matt go to Devin's house. Um, they pull up and they see it's this giant compound with servants, you know, this giant mansion. And AJ learns that she is insanely rich, way richer than his family. Um, and he's actually uncomfortable with this, um, you know, He's not comfortable dating a girl who has more money than he does. And we're given the impression that this is really the first time he's ever encountered someone who has more money than his family does. And at the end of the episode, he's left wondering, you know, why his family isn't as rich as the movies would have people believe. But I got to say, you know, AJ is pretty dumb. He's got this very hot girlfriend who's very rich, and he's basically throwing it all away for his own ego. So as if there was any more reason to look down on AJ, this is another one. Uh, but John Philippe has been ducking Artie. Um, the due date for the payback has, has come and gone, and he hasn't paid Artie yet. Artie goes to confront him, 
and learns that the venture has fallen through. The deal is a bust, and this guy does not have the money to pay Artie back the 50k. You know, Artie ends up attacking him, uh, but John Philippe ends up kicking his ass and ripping his earring out and throwing him out of the apartment. So Artie is left, you know, with nothing. He's a total failure um, and overwhelmed by all his setbacks. He drinks some alcohol and takes some sleeping pills. Um, he calls Tony, who manages to, you know, call 911 and get him to the hospital in time before he dies. And in the hospital, Tony agrees to, you know, forgive the debt. Um, and instead, he'll he'll collect the debt that this guy owes and he'll wipe uh, the tab that he owes Artie in return. You know, Artie suggests that Tony knew that this was going to go down this way. He could sense that, you know, he was going to make a profit off of all this. And Tony is really infuriated by this because, again, he's been trying to feel like a good person this whole episode. And he's confronted by the fact that he kind of preyed on Artie um, and used it to his own advantage. Um, so he tells Artie to never mention this again to him and storms out. Uh, later, Tony, Carmela, Brian and his wife and Furio and his new date um, go to a Billy Joel concert, and then they get dinner afterwards. Furio and his date are getting along really well, but Carmela is not too happy about this, even though she set them up. You know, she was trying to kind of live vicariously through this girl dating Furio. She is uncomfortable seeing him with another woman happy because she's in love with him. But Brian praises Tony at the table for being, you know, a great friend and a great guy. And this seems to, you know, make Tony pretty happy. Later, he says that, you know, he's going to donate to the suicide hotline in Gloria's name and, you know, walk away from this and move on. So, yeah, that was Everybody Hurts, uh, a very interesting episode. Um, I, I think the combination of, you know, Michael Imperioli as a writer and Steve Buscemi um, produced a very interesting episode with a lot of great emotional beats. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next Soprano Log coming soon. Special thank you to my patrons for reminding me every day that I'm not a toxic person. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, and Logan.